Welcome back to the channel, it's Andy aka The Flying Yeti and today I wanted to review my new lid which I shall put a little picture video type thing up in a second but I've just purchased uh, Arai Torx 4 um, I thought I'd do a little review on it, first impression sort etc etc Now I must confess that I have been out for a ride out with this particular helmet on the other day and I didn't film it uh, simply because I suddenly remembered I haven't got any sticky mounts for my camera and I thought mm, I'll, I'll do a first review see how I'll get on I'll do a first review and see how I'll get on um, and then of course couldn't wait. Oh, I'm gonna have to go out on it even though I've got a sticky mount. So I've got my sticky mounts now as you can see so camera's on the bike. So anyway, so what do I think? Right, okay, so the quality of the helmet, when you first pick the helmet up, you can tell it in a 199 pound helmet, it's more like a 500 pound helmet. The the feel, the quality, the finish, all the padding on the inside is a lot more luxurious than picking up a cheap one. I picked up some cheap ones in my local store which will be JNS in uh, Findon, Northamptonshire and you can, they just seem, without even trying them on, they just seem, I don't know, flimsy, plasticky, um, the, padding, the, the padding on the inside doesn't seem so nice and luxurious like I just said. So yeah, I suppose you kind of you kind of get what you pay for, and you expect that with most things. So yeah, overall, the look, the feel of the of the product is a uh, five out of five. I would say it's it's slightly heavier than I was hoping it was going to be. I mean, it's not like really heavy. I've got an Arai. Uh, what, what's my other, what's my other Arai called? GP4. Is that what it's called? Anyway, whatever. I've got one of those and it's probably about the same weight as that. The next thing I noticed is when I go to put it on my head, the first thing you notice is the, the base of the helmet, the bit that will sit around your neckline, I suppose, once it's on your head. It's quite narrow, and I've got an, unus an, 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 an unusually large head, if you've ever seen me on camera. So I can get into the XL version of this this I know you said this camera I can get into the XL I'll let it that bit out I can get into the extra large helmet and it fits nice and snugly the cheek pads are reasonably tight it is snug let's say across my forehead now with experience of past helmets I have noticed that they do <coughs> excuse me they do give a little bit so once they sort of bed in, they do sort of like, I was going to say get bigger, that doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. Once the, once the padding material sort of beds in, they will loosen up on your head very, very slightly. So I'm not concerned about it being slightly too tight on my forehead, because I'm assuming that will settle down once, once it beds in. So that's not really an issue. Um, when you go to put it on your head, because the base of it is really tight, now this is not the padding, this is the actual construction of the helmet. Because it's really tight, it's like, my God, that, I'm never gonna get that on my head. It's almost painful to get it over my ears. But once it's on, you think, oh, actually, this fits really nice. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised, because I, to be honest, I ordered it online, because I've seen it in the shops, didn't try it on and I thought to myself oh that, that looks really nice I kind of want one of those but it's five, I can't remember the price it's like like five and 550 quid whatever it's 500 something anyway and I managed to get this exact model in the color scheme that I wanted for 487 um, from an eBay retailer which his name escapes me to be honest with you but yeah I could have given him a plug um, if I could remember, sorry about that Mr. eBay retailer. So, I don't like buying things like that blind. 
because like I say you can try it on and think well it looks really nice but it don't really fit my head so you'll have to send it back and it's just a bull like it, so it's easy doing in the shop but nevertheless I took a, um, a blind leap of faith and it worked out all right so once it's on your head my head then the, fe uh, the field of vision the field of vision the view yeah the field of vision I'll go with that phrase is very wide very very great field of vision the, uh, the, the visor sort of wraps right round there's plenty of room to see left and right up and down plenty of room so visor really good there's plenty of air vents there's a good air vent on your on the front bit on the on where the chin where are you going where like the chin is so that's kind of like a nice air vent that circulates some air around your face a little bit there's a couple of little vents on the top there's vents on the back of the of the helmet construction there's two little vents on the top of the visor itself which I think from memory all, all um, our eyelids have got that I may or may or may not be wrong I don't know but anyway this particular one's got the two little vents on the top of the visor which when you're going along give you a little bit extra ventilation the visor still as I've got the visor on now I haven't put any anti-fog on the inside I don't normally buy that anti-fog stuff whatever you call it I just smear a bit of um, fairy liquid the old-fashioned fairy liquid which kind of works just as well I think you can kind of go ah, in your helmet if you never used it on the inside of your helmet then you can properly give it a ah, and it doesn't steam up when you got the fairy liquid smeared on the inside so little consumer tip there if you didn't already know that so overall very very pleased with it the wind noise nothing major there is a slight wind noise but I think you're gonna get that unless you wear earplugs you're gonna get that with every single helmet you buy so the wind noise is is minimal put it like that so as I'm wearing the helmet now it seems apart from like I say the slight I wouldn't say it's discomfort but it's slight pressing on my forehead but the last ride I've done I probably had it on for about an hour and a half and I didn't feel like I needed to stop and take it off and wring my head out to get it back into shape again so yeah nothing drastic like I said like I said nothing drastic I've got no idea where I'm going I'm just randomly riding around get around this corner what's this on there paint on the road mm -hmm. take it easy just in case and the one thing I'm a bit unsure about apart from the aesthetic reasonings is the peaked the peaked bit on this advisor the peak on the front of the helmet which if you don't like it you can take it off it's just held on with screws and I think there's even a little um, like blanking plate thing that our eye supplied to go over the screws screw holes or whatever once once you remove the peak so if you don't like the peak you can take it off but I kind of got this helmet because I'm a bit of a tart when it comes to bikes and bike gear and all that carry on so I thought mm, you know what that that helmet that Arai helmet Torex is gonna look really good on me gear so I'm gonna look like I'm properly going on an adventure I look like I know what I'm doing or Everyone's probably looking at me. I mean, I feel good wearing it. Everyone else is probably looking at me thinking, you know, all the gear and no idea. But as long as I'm out smiling and enjoying myself, that's all that matters when you're going for a ride. It doesn't really matter what everyone else is thinking, as they don't nod at you on a GS. Something else I've noticed a little bit. They do nod at you, but 60% I'd say. So I'm 40% down on my nods. As if I, as opposed to, rather, if I was on the R1, then pretty much everybody nods. Oh well, I'll get over it, won't I? So the only thing I can say about the peak, apart from it looks great, is that when you're going at a reasonable pace, you've got to be aware that if you even slightly get a bit of wind underneath the peak, it will do that with your head it kind of wants to pull your head back which is pretty obvious because like a big spoiler on the front of your helmet rather than the back and 
Likewise, if you put your tilt your head forward, it wants to push your head forward as well. So yes, it acts like a reverse spoiler, if you want to call it that. Will I get used to that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But even if it's a slight annoyance with the with the wind getting under me peak, I'm still probably going to leave it on because, like I said, it looks good. And that's all that matters, really. I think the only time I would probably consider taking it off is if we went for a long motorway ride, like, for argument's sake, we were supposed to be in the Isle of Man a couple of weeks back, but for the obvious reasons, we're not. So, if I was going to the Isle of Man, which is basically all motorway, all the way from my front door to Liverpool, then, yeah, this peak might be slightly annoying after a while. So I would probably consider taking it off for that journey. But I'd probably put it in, in my top box and put it back on again once I got to the Isle of Man, just so I look the part when I'm going over the mountain or whatever. Yeah, so before you get bored and click to the next video and give me a thumbs down, you may consider giving me a thumbs up, or you may even consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see future videos, then make sure you do. Um, why would you not? It's free. I mean, come on, look. I'm a little, little, little nobody that's got a few subs and just want to get a few more you know what i'm saying it's just you know what i'm saying what a stupid thing to say but yes it is free so click the subscribe button please i'm not begging you but oh come on what's wrong with that and then uh, some future videos coming up i'm planning on test riding i said this on my last video but you probably didn't see it i'm planning on test riding some other bmws in the range so the first one I want to do, providing they've got a uh, demonstrator at Wollaston BMW that I can steal for an hour or so, is the, um, the BMW 1000XR. So I want to basically ride this 1250GS to Wollaston BMW, jump straight off of this onto the 1000XR, so I can give you a true back-to-back -back on what they're like, because, they're, you know, they're basically the same sort of styly bike but just different engines so i'm quite intrigued to see the difference myself so if you want to see any of that carry on and i'll oh, well, i'll jump on a few other others in the range i want to ride that 9t as well that looks quite a funky little beast so um i will be doing those in the very near future so on that note if you've got to the end you've done very well and you've got great attention span and you must have a really sad boring existence to watch all my crap videos so i applaud you for that and i'll leave you alone now and i'll speak to you on the next one goodbye